We got challenged, I think it's been twice now actually, for Cameron to describe foof. We've done this in the past, I realize. Yeah. Foof is one of those things where it's like, foof is a chemical compound made of two oxygens and two fluorines. And it's very, it like, people are like, it sets fire to bricks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it has no good reason to exist. It oxidizes absolutely everything. It, uh, I, it's one of the least interesting things about chemistry to me. <laughs> Cause I just look at it and go, yeah, that'll set fire to basically anything. I, I, I mean, you could use it as a learning tool to explain covalent bonds to ultimately grade nine students. I suppose. Uh, but yeah, no, it just, it's very reactive. It will, it will oxidize basically anything and uh, I won't go near it. <laughs> it has no reason to be. Yeah, it's not, it's not an experimental substance. It's, it's some, it's a novelty somebody made. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm still mute. I'm sorry. Is, does it actually differ from dioxin to fluoride? Or? Uh, probably, I, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I never worked with it, wouldn't go near it. Not really my area of expertise. <laughs> then what is mm -hmm. your area of expertise specifically? Because I know there's been some people asking about material science. I did my uh, independent research in, uh, I did it with a computational chemistry group. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I, I did, uh, my paper was written on the optoelectronic properties of um, uh, polymer metal nanocomposites. And so what I did is I built like this, in a computer I built a, um, a composite of a polymer and a metal nanoparticles, and then I shone light on it and saw where it absorbed, basically for various like densities of nanoparticles. Um, and we did that using a simulation strategy called um, uh, 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 <laughs> brain. It's only been four years. It's fine. If you don't remember it, I mean... No, it's Cohen paper. It, uh, brain, why? The software suite we used is, is Siesta. It's... What? We didn't use Monte... Our, our work group used Monte Carlo a lot. We used um, Monte Carlo a lot, but for this paper, because it's an electronic system, I used... Oxygen. Your stats were a ghost. My brain is gone. <laughs> it's just gone. If you were to x-ray, there would be a moth flying around in there right now. It, 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 what, you, what you do is you're trying to simulate um, systems of thousands of electrons, but because it's a multi multiple body problem, it's intractable. So what you do is you abstract um, the electrons to instead of being particles to densities, which is why it is um, uh, 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 density theorem. Um, uh, this is what happens when you play with ghosts in the lab. No, this is what happens when you stay up till 4 a.m. <laughs> for several days. So you, you abstract it to um, uh, 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 like a Functional density, yeah, density functionals. Okay. DFT, density functional theorem. That uh, took way too long. God, that yeah. was embarrassing. Oh my God, maybe I shouldn't go back to grad school. You wouldn't be doing maybe this at four in the morning. But yeah. Maybe I'm too stupid now to go back to, to, to grad school. Stage two is they make you defend your thesis at 4 a.m. Oh. Use DFT. Anyway, I found out that the compound, the, the nanocomposite that I made, uh, had absorptions at frequencies that were useful for absorbing uh, photons at ground level. Oh. So it 
Like that a photovoltaics, could meet, essentially. Yeah, like a photovoltaic. Right. Oh. It could theoretically work as a um, as the antenna in a solar panel, which you know, cool story. We have a lot of those. Mine was recyclable. Ah, Ooh. nice. And it work. It, it's a thing where it's like this could work out. Yeah, it could work out. And my my supervisor was like, "This is you know, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, if you want to come back and do grad grad work, we would probably want you to do a hybrid, like." Um, uh, 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 a do it thesis a... where you would actually like make some of this, oh, okay. and you know then do a theoretical component with it, and then like synthesize this in a lab. Nice. And that was really cool sounding. That was a very good offer. Hmm. Um, but hey, tuition. Well, yeah. Also, like I was a B student oh. because I've been doing Desert Bus while I was in undergrad right. and also working for, I had a part-time job while I was doing an honors degree. <laughs> uh, uh, so I was a B student, right. which yep. because they want an A you know, to do grad work, yeah. uh, I would need to go and do probably two more undergrad courses oh, and get right. A's in them, which isn't a problem, but it's, you know, $2,000 cash. I, I yeah. was in the same boat. Mm -hmm. You need a 3.67 to do grad work in biology. I had a 3.66. Mm, yep. And it's just like, but I could. I, I, I want to. And they're like, you can. Just do two more grad first, yeah. Now I'm um, close, close to graduate programs. Yeah. But I, I was very excited, and I got to defend my thesis, and or my, well, my, my paper at least. You know, because you know they mock it up for the undergrads like it's a proper defense. Yeah. And you have you have a committee that comes in and and, and asks you questions. And I don't remember any of it, but afterwards, uh, my friends who were watching were like, "You came down on Matt kind of hard when he asked you that question." And apparently, one of the profs was like, "Aha! But what if this?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and my prof was like, "Yeah, he was condescending to you, and you stomped on him." <laughs> Like, I have, I have no memory of this whatsoever. Wow. You were in the zone. Apparently. <laughs> you were going to brook no BS. Yeah. Which I, is, this is serious. Science is serious business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I do not truck with fools. <laughs> right? But, like, what my supervisor told me that, like, once you're in, then, you know, um, she was on a really good... Um, she had a really good grant going and then would be able to buy out all of my TA ships. Ah, so I would just oh, be able to do research and wouldn't have to work. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. But in order to get there, you have to overcome the $2,000 hurdle of... Yeah, just having to do two more, like, undergrad courses and it sucks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I mean, I'll do it. I've been saving. Great. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. Sweet. I'm glad. I'm really happy about that. Mm -hmm. That's the... <laughs> kind of thing that I um, definitely am with the work that people who are now working for Loading Ready Run are doing is like at least I feel like trying to provide uh, more um, that's that's a thing that's happening in Loading Ready Run now more is that is that we've we instead of having as many contractors as we have we have hired people as part-time employees hmm. and my hope is to try to that is establishing some sort of like relative um, uh, consistency in what people mm. are taking home every month. Mm -hmm. And that way it's like, it f it's not a safety net, but it does feel like it's like, I know what's showing up. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, and that, that's been tremendously helpful and has improved my ability to save. Although, like, that was what I actually did my research in. The course that I took in my final year that I was like, but wait, was uh, statistical thermodynamics, okay. which is um, the, 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 it sounds incredibly dry. There were two undergrads in the course okay. and six grad students who were there like, uh, um, and me and this under, other undergrad who was an exchange student, I wanna say, okay. were, d d anyway. Yeah. It's incredibly dry unless you are one of these people with an incredibly stupid brain who is like, yes, Show me more partition theorems and, and like partition functions and and uh, and uh, um, ensembles. I want to know all of the things to count the atoms. 
oh, and cool. figure out the entropy of the system and how that's analogous to information. Give me more. Was that kind of like a swerve, like right at the end of your degree? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Because I, I also did that, like right at the end, I did, I, I doing biology and a little bit of computer science, and I swerved in my last course in my last semester into computational mm -hmm. biology. Oh, yeah, using yeah. Using algorithms to decode DNA. Yeah, and like I... Like, yes, feed me all this line information piece by piece. Okay, what I want to know is that like when you have the proteins yeah. zipping along the, the, the molecules okay. and assembling like... RNA like into you, DNA or yeah when you're transcribing proteins, yeah okay are all the proteins just sitting there in solution because all, all I see in the animation is like the the enzyme like running along the thing and then like pulling component it's always pulling the next component yeah out of the air and putting it on and it's just right there for it and I'm like but oh. it can't be are is it just like a soup of the proteins sitting there or if it is just pulling the one, the next one that goes on the thing and putting it on, what put it right there? Like, is it a chemical? Is it a chemical signal to be like, "Hey, protein, oh. come towards me"? I, you know what? I, I didn't do that deeply into the protein synthesis. From from what I know, is all the the functional components to build the proteins are all there, and it builds the proteins, and the proteins have an actual fold state based on. Uh, mm -hmm. Like how like the the, the nucleotide bonds and things and backwards, so they're gonna have a natural folding pattern, and then once they fold, I think they just connect the next piece and they just start rebuilding. Because your your DNA and your RNA chain, I believe it should code a number of proteins one after another. So it's like and these so it's like, they're, these they're things like are always right pieces. at hand because it's like the I know the, are, yeah right. I know the next thing I need, and and fortunately there's hundreds of thousands of these things that are all right nearby. And I know the next piece that I need, so I, I know it because it's like that's well, the next thing it has there, to kind of go here. There's only a certain codon, like uh, I can't remember what the term is now, um, but it can only the, only the one piece will fit in next. Yeah, like only only, only the correct. Yeah, because it's all like. But I think they just keep grabbing the next piece and just folding it into place, and then mm -hmm. when that protein is done, it just starts building the next protein while connected to it. Yeah, like and if it's so. I was just so was it, it, she was my thing. Okay, you and didn't then, do and like. And then I swerved into like yeah. studying just using the algorithm portions of the studying the DNA chains. Like so. the, the joke we always had was like, oh, we're just like five years away from being able to like simulate the entire body, right? And then everyone <laughs> yeah, would just exactly. be like, ha, 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 ha. and then we'd laugh until we peed, and then we laugh at that. Yeah. And <laughs> because like the, the simulation <laughs> part, like all, all all the groups in the simul or all the, the simulation researchers were like. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, we can we can do that for you. Does oh, anyone do know how that would work? I guess we could MD. We'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll use molecular dynamics to see where the active site is. Oh, it worked. Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, okay, good. Okay, <laughs> okay we, no, we, okay. We were just guessing. We, we, made it another, we made it another three months, everyone. Okay. 